Bangkok Airport is like no other airport on Earth. Welcome to Thailand. This is my best smiling. It's where East meets West. Ching, 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 ching. Buddhist meets backpacker. Get that right to the beach. And traveller meets trouble. You never see me in Thailand ever again. No, no, yes. And if the culture seems strange, the language seems foreign. And you're 6,000 miles from home. I'm stuck in Bangkok. Don't panic. There's an army of airport staff just waiting to help you out. One way. How may I help you? <laughs> or another. Get in the line. So whether it's your gateway to a million once in a lifetime experiences. It's all about love, 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 and love. Or just the ticket to a good old fashioned holiday nightmare. Look at all the cancelled flights. This is your final call. <laughs> Well, it's happy, everyone. Welcome, yes, what, please, to Bangkok Airport. There's trouble brewing at the airport of smiles. Walked out of the hotel room, and there's shooting going on. As protesters take to the streets, the airport grinds to a halt. Nobody. You can see nobody. This kind of sad situation that I got. A full moon party goes horribly wrong for two young Brit packers. She just collapsed in my arms. The only explanation is that I got fight. The English Thai boxing team touches down and they're spoiling for a fight. Hey, this is the one that we, we train for. This yeah, is the big yeah. one. And it all kicks off at Tourist Police HQ. Is it the first time somebody tried to kill officer? <laughs> There's trouble in paradise and the airport is on red alert. Anti-government protesters are holding demonstrations across the city, hoping to bring Bangkok to a standstill. We will see in the news on the TV program. There are a lot of people that buy for the political situation. The shutdown means roads are blocked and banks and businesses are closed, and the airport could be next. It's like a revolution, this country. I hope it's not happening here. <laughs> Pray for that. <laughs> but the protests are already affecting the airport. As word gets round, tourists like Tiffany and Matt are desperate to get home. I knew about the riots, but I didn't think it was going to be that bad at first. But when speaking to a few locals, the Thais and that, um, and they were just like, yeah, yeah, get out, get out if you can. And then we just came straight to the airport. But getting out's not so easy. Today till 10. Sammy was due to fly home today after a month in Thailand. So this morning I was meant to get a shuttle bus at 4 p.m. and then I walked out of the hotel room and there's shooting going on. I was like, okay, so there's a riot going on. Am I gonna be able to get to the airport? And now my flight's been delayed. The last time there were protests like this, the airport was shut down for eight days. This time the police are ready for anything. <laughs> Staff are working overtime to advise anxious tourists how to avoid the trouble spots. There's a lot of demonstrations going on. Protests. Thank you very much. So many people come here to ask the way, how to go to downtown, another way. We just stay here and give them some information about the protester in, in Bangkok. Three, two, one. Peace. So far, the troubles haven't reached Captain Jack, the airport's happiest immigration officer. I love my job. He's hard at work stamping visas with his trusty stamping machine. I love this machine. The sound so good. See? Ching, 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 ching. That makes my day. <laughs> Every visa Jack stamps means more money for Thailand. It will go to government account. This is the income of my country. OK. But if the tourists stay away, it could be bad news for Jack and his country. <laughs> you know, I cannot have, like, the opinion for the politics right now. Because we work as a government officer, so we are in the middle, and now we are we all work our best, yeah, work our best, you know. So we work our best. Yeah. 
Not everyone's been scared off by the troubles. The English Thai boxing team are here to compete in the World Championships. They love a good fight. This is the one that we, we train for. This yeah, is the big one. Yeah. We've got to get my gold medal. I promised my grandma. Will's come with his girlfriend, Beth. They fell in love when their eyes met over a crowded gym in Oldham. They've been fighting together ever since. They asked me out at the gym. How romantic is that? <laughs> he was, like, looking at me, went, oh, Beth, what might have been, just go out with me? <laughs> and I was one then. <laughs> It's Beth's first time competing in the World Championships. Will's been knocked out here before, but this time they've got each other. I've got Beth with me for my big, biggest support this year, I'm, and, and I'm her biggest support. Being there for each other and having someone there makes you feel a lot calmer and a lot better. And he knows me more than anyone, and I know him more than anyone, so... Beating the ties at their own game won't be easy, but Will can't wait to kick some ass, which is probably allowed in the rules. It's a lot more rougher than any other sports that I, I know about. Uh, you get to use your elbows and your knees. Which you, I, don't, I don't know many sports that you can use your elbows and your knees in anyway. I've always been a fighter. Since I was young, I used to fight at school and everything. The tournament's taking place in the old capital city of Ayutthaya, away from the worst of the protests. But Thai boxing's a tough sport. Will they still be smiling when the fighting's over? <laughs>
in Thailand, seems like 40% of the shuttle flights was cancelled. The tourism, the hotel, they also affected by this situation. So it's not good at all. Let me see your boarding pass, please. Working alongside Captain A is Captain Sarik. He's the airport's most helpful immigration officer. Passport, please. Today, he's helping to reassure passengers anxious about the political unrest. Have you heard of uh, protesting in Bangkok before? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we heard about it. Uh. But we think it should be okay. A lot of people in Hong Kong where we live, like, were canceling flights, but yeah. we thought Those it would be okay. Why, 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 why cancel? Because of protesting, right? Some people were scared. Some people yeah. were not coming, but we think it should be okay. Oh, it's okay. This way, please. Nothing to fear. All right? Do you think so? We got in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Hot off the plane are Tally and Tiri, best friends from Maidenhead. Visa on arrival up there. And then, what, we get our visa and then go to baggage then? Yeah. They're here for a six-week trip around Thailand and Laos. We have no idea what we're doing. They're going to spend one night in Bangkok, if they ever get out of this airport. Hello. Hello. We're just wondering where we need to go. Uh, um, do you have visa? No, we don't. We need to get a visa. It's the first time, Thailand. Yeah. The friends land on their feet with Captain Sarik. Not only does he point them in the right direction, he helps fill in their arrival cards. Thank you so much. Thank you. And this will be a stay in the line. Bless him. He's the friendliest person we've met so far. Yeah, no, definitely. Tally and Terry might need all the help they can get if they're going to make the full moon party at Koh Samui. It's like a big party where all travellers go. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Tally, what do we do once we get out? <laughs> Search for a place to stay. <laughs> it's like first time on our own, like away from everyone. We're kind of on a whim, aren't we? Maybe go to information. Yeah, OK. Which way is that? To the right. We're kind of a bit both unorganised, trying to be organised together, trying to keep each other yeah. going. We keep the balance of fun, but yeah. not getting lost and kidnapped. And in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> We're just looking for a hostel for one night. Hostel? Yeah. Near here or in the city? Um, near here, because we've got to be back here tomorrow morning. I don't think we really know what we want at the moment. It's just an adventure. We're not expecting anything except sun and palm trees. Yeah. I don't really know what is going to happen. I think we're going to learn a lot. I hope so. Learn a lot. Yeah. It's I an hope experience so. of a lifetime that many people don't get. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, You've been amazing. I got the hotel name. Yeah, can you pronounce that? Savarava Bambi. <laughs> the girls won't be getting up to any monkey business. <laughs> These are what our boyfriends gave us from home to keep as a comfort kind of thing. I do think we'll look pathetic, the girls. <laughs> the girls at the beach party are crying because <laughs> they've lost their teddies. <laughs> oh, no. Sorted for B&B, &B, Tally and Tiri head off. Next stop, the full moon party. Now, where's the way out? That's the next exit. <laughs> Big sign. Where? Over there. A couple of hours north of Bangkok lies the ancient city of Ayatoya. Today, it's hosting the opening ceremony of the World Thai Boxing Championships. You ready? Yeah? Remember what all this hard work's for, you're here. Will and Beth will be fighting for England in the spiritual home of their sport. You have it. It's yours, this. Train for it. Stepping into the ring first, and Beth's doing her best to fire him up. Yeah. No, man, what you know? Will's teammates know how tough it'll be fighting at the highest level. As soon as that bell rings, he's got three rounds to just go for it. Like, unleash the animal, all this hard training that he's put in, he's just got to go, absolutely give everything he's got. To represent your country is an honour, isn't it? It's going to be a hard fight. Come on, Will! 
Will's first opponent is from Uzbekistan, and with Beth's shouts ringing in his ears, Will unleashes the animal. With the first win under his belt, Will's a step closer getting his hands on gold. Proud of him. Really proud of him. Mate, I nearly knocked him out. He saw it down in third, so I thought I would. Because I was a bit tired. <laughs> he's been worrying so much, and then he steps in the ring, and he's just amazing every time. Beth's had the supporting role tonight, but tomorrow it'll be Will in the crowd and she'll be centre stage. Back at Bangkok Airport, it's eerily quiet as more holidaymakers cancel their flights. This time. Passenger. So, what you do? Oh, oh, Foreigner don't come to Thailand mm -hmm. because they check the news. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are afraid. <laughs> In his immigration booth, Captain Jack is growing restless. I'm waiting for the passenger coming to apply for visa. But this time, nobody. Nobody's here. So I'm kind of sad. To keep spirits up, Jack's been entertaining passengers with a dance routine. I try to find, to find my video that, that I'm, I'm do performance. See? See? How professional I am. Back at Tourist Police HQ, Officer Baitong has welcomed back a familiar guest. The head office of the Tourist Police, they called me here. They said they have some, somebody abnormal over there. <laughs> And then let me go there and bring him to my office. He told me I am Robocop. <laughs> Robocop has been identified as the tourist who gave Toy a tough time on his last visit to the office. I asked him, do you need some food? He said yes. And my colleagues bring him some food. As the man becomes increasingly erratic, officers monitor his behaviour closely. I think he has some problem in, in his brain. Their fears are realized when the man suddenly turns violent. Bad mood. <laughs> The man is quickly subdued, but it's a tense moment. Luckily, Baitong can see the funny side. Strange situation. That guy, is the British guy. Is it the first time somebody tried to kill officer? Is it the first time? The man is taken to the local police station down on the ground floor, where he can be held more securely. Realising he's ill, they don't arrest him. Instead, he's taken to a Bangkok hospital where he'll be looked after and his mental state evaluated. 
As the protests continue downtown, more tourists are trying to leave Thailand, but they're facing ever longer delays. Eight hours early for our flight. Yeah. Because everything's being shut down due to protests. Connor and his friends have been stuck here most of the day. We've been here for five, five hours already. We got told to come here early because of the protests, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get over all the taxis and stuff. To add insult to injury, Connor had to show his penis to a ladyboy. Uh, yeah, when we were stressing about the getting to a new hotel last night, we went into a travel agent's, and I felt a tap on my shoulder, I turned around, and the ladyboy went, let me see your cock, let me see your cock. Showed her it, and she buggered off. <laughs> Connor's one of the lucky ones. I was stuck in Bangkok because my taxi didn't show up and all the streets were shut down, so nobody picked me up. So I walked. Lydia's missed her flight after getting caught up in the protests. No, it's not open. I, I've gone to the fifth floor three times. And she wasn't happy to find her airline desk closed when she got here. Yeah, well, I'm having a serious problem here, and I, I'm trying to get the fuck out of Bangkok. Excuse my French. Yes, I missed a flight today because I, I can't get the fuck out of Bangkok. It's like Lydia nearly didn't get here at all. I had to walk for like a mile, and then I asked this guy on his motorbike if he would give me a ride. It wasn't even a taxi, so I paid some guy on the street to take me on his motorcycle to get me here. The airline will transfer her ticket. Can you book me for that flight and and not charge me? But the next available flight doesn't leave till tomorrow. I'm a little bit pissed. Slightly. Want to get a beer? <laughs> After eight weeks backpacking through Asia, Lydia won't let a one-day delay spoil the trip of a lifetime. Oh, it's been phenomenal. I've been on the road for two months, and I feel like... I feel like I've had an education of, you know, a couple of years, really, packed into two months. I've learned so much more about the people around me and how other people live and putting life in perspective and what's important. The whole day to kill, Lydia's resigned to a long and boring stay at the airport. I just hope that I get on my flight tomorrow. Because nobody knows what the fuck is happening. I'll get out at some point. It's not like I'm gonna like die here. Things could be worse. With more protests expected tonight, police are putting up roadblocks around the airport perimeter. There's a chance some travelers won't make it to the airport at all. If some tourists, they're booking a hotel in, in Bangkok and they have a flight today, if they want to come here, maybe they, they will miss a flight because of traffic. The United Kingdom awaits. I don't want to go back. After a month in Thailand, Laura and Nina are due to fly home tonight. Let's stay then. OK. <laughs> I'll just stay here in my bed, in my cozy bed. You can go if you want to, but I think I'll stay. With the roads outside gridlocked, they may have no choice. I mean, just look at it. It's, the traffic is ridiculous. They're not moving. But that's partly, I think, we're right in the middle of the protests. Yeah. There have been some people no, getting I mean, killed, but, we, but haven't really, yeah, we haven't been in the middle of it. Yeah. Fuck. Are we going <laughs> to make it home? The girls have an added incentive for catching their flight. Their 30-day visa exemptions expire tonight. I want to make sure we get to the airport, yeah, let's get there airport way before well. midnight, <laughs> pass through immigration so we can say, no, it's still the 17th, <laughs> even though our flight leaves technically on the 18th. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Let's, let's do that. Let's not just risk anything, really, you know, on the last day that we're here. We could end up in jail. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? No. <laughs> Down on the streets, there are signs of the protests everywhere. Look at that. Yeah. Thai people usually are not violent, they're nice. They're friendly. Yeah, look at that. Look, this is not nice. Tori's on his way to meet an old friend at the airport. 
They, they close a lot of roads like this one is closed. Look, you can't go anywhere. Unbelievable. Tori came to Bangkok for a relaxing break, but it's not working out. This is a holiday. It's supposed to be a holiday, but it's becoming a little bit of a nightmare now. Tori's friend Joan has flown in from Australia, but now he's too late to meet her off the plane, and he can't seem to find her anywhere. She's supposed to come out here. In this, uh, this gate here, the B. Yeah. As he sets off to look for her, he starts to lose focus. That's a beautiful dress, eh? Look at that. See that? Nice colour. Nice smile, eh? Look at that. they got a beautiful smile here. <laughs> she's not here. I don't hope she's, she's OK. Hey, I'm worried. Tori decides to charm the tourist police into helping him find his friend. What's her name? It's a John Wallace. Yeah. <laughs> man. No, it's a woman. If he's a man, yeah. I'll go. <laughs> I don't mind waiting for a woman. What flight? Uh, I can't remember the, uh, oh. the number. But it's landed at 8.40 in but the morning. Yes. Unbelievable, eh? Right? Uh, I'm the... struggling. Tori's friend has picked up her bags, and Officer Kanakwan thinks she may have left the airport. If she get the bags, it means she passed already. Why we have to check immigration again? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just, just peace of mind, anyway. Mr. Tori, do you have cell phone? Pardon? Cell phone? Mobile number. Oh, I do, but I just got it yesterday. I can't remember the number. Okay, call me. I don't have the, the phone with me. Oh. I left it this morning at home. Um, I'm supposed to be in holiday. I don't need any phone, any... Yeah, that's necessary now. Now. <laughs> Tori seems to be getting desperate. Can you do the announcement? Like... No. Ask information, they don't. You can't, yes. You got no power at all? No. Okay. My option is uh, running out. Probably have to go out and check it. My emails outside the airport. Hopefully, you're going Officer Kanakwan's only too pleased to point Tori in the direction of anywhere else. But when he tries to log on to his email, he can't remember his password despite receiving a prompt. You ask me where I met my wife. Well, which one? <laughs> Unbelievably, he can't log on. I can't access it, eh? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's shaping up like a long day. Would you like a drink? Up in Ayatoya, another victory means Will's reached the finals of the World Thai Boxing Championships. Now he's hoping to find similar fortune for his girlfriend Beth in her fight tonight. Going to the temple, get, um, getting this blast for Beth. I'm going to give it her just before a fight for good luck. Got it from um, from the shopping centre earlier. Really. The monks are busy at the moment, so we can't bless the Buddha for, uh, for Beth. Having come all this way, Will decides to bless the Buddha himself before heading back to training camp, where he finds Beth sick with nerves. Beth? Can I come in? I got you something. You'll be fine. Your hand's shaking. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> it's bad day today. It's all yours, isn't it? Give me best. <laughs> Go for it. I've messaged my mum. She always says, why can't I pick something like synchronised swimming? But then again, that's not me, so... Beth's just a few hours away from the fight of her life. And Will's praying the lucky Buddha does the trick. I'll come with you. Back at the airport, Tori still hasn't found his friend Joan. He doesn't have a phone, he can't pick up emails, and his beer's starting to froth. Unbelievable. He enlists the help of Officer Jibidu at the information desk. My problem is I'm uh, waiting for a friend, yes. and I think she's lost in the airport. Really? All I need is just you announce your name 
Oh, yeah. If we can find here, that would be very nice. Okay. Woo! One, one. <laughs> we got it somewhere. <laughs> but that's already five hours. Yes. Probably she's lost somewhere. How about she might get to the hotel already or something? Like what hotel? Okay. I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a lady. It's a lady? Yes. With the big boobs. A big one. Jib's pretty sure Tori's friend has left the airport, but she can offer some free advice. You shouldn't be drinking. If you drink, you will look, you will discredit yourself. Really? And you, yeah, exactly. And no one would like to help you as much as you don't drink. Well, that's why. It's my first beer for the day. I'm in trouble drink. already. It looks like Tori's never going to find his friend Joan. That's believable, right? I hope you find her. Thank you very you much. You can always come back to this counter. I don't think I'm going to come back here. Really? No, that's enough. For today is enough. Oh. Yeah. There's only one word for it. Unbelievable. With more protests expected tonight, police are guarding all the roads to the airport. Thank you so much. Laura and Nina are heading back to London and hoping to avoid the worst of the trouble, but it's going to be tight. Are we going to make it on time? And to make matters worse, their standard 30-day visa exemption is about to expire. We'll see what happens. Let's hope he, um, he hurries up. Oh, we just made it. When the girls finally reach the airport... No. Oh, my God. <gasps> Cancelled! What? Oh, no. Look at all the cancelled flights. What's going on? We're fucked. With no chance of catching their connection to London, they go in search of an alternative flight. Right now, the visa is the least of my worries, to be honest. I just need to get back to London. We need to get the <laughs> second flight. That's really important, because otherwise we're going to have to buy... Yes. One new flight is OK, but two? I mean... That... No, <laughs> it's not going to happen. At the airline desk, there's a lifeline. Oh, wow, it's That's a better, even better. It's shorter waiting time and shorter arrival. Much so. better. They're offered a free transfer onto a better flight. They put us on a flight to London via Dubai, so we're now off to Dubai. Just like that, in five minutes. And we're actually saving four hours. So we get to London a lot earlier than we thought we would be, which is nice. Yeah, so, a blessing in disguise. Yeah, it is actually a blessing in disguise. So. And no mentioning of um, visa. Well, not yet. Oh, right. This is it now, immigration. Fingers crossed. Will the visas be spotted? Laura's first to go. When she makes it, Nina slips through after, and the friends are cleared for takeoff. Laura and Nina may have slipped the net, but as the protests continue, Captain Jack is stamping his visas in a state of heightened alertness. And um, I hear it, like, every day. Ching, 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 ching. But you need at least a page for Jack's stamp, and this passenger is running out of space. Time for a friendly reminder. Sir, I want you to understand that when, you, when you're making a visa on arrival, you need a visa on arrival in Thailand, we need one page full. And this time, we really, really assist you to get in, OK? Because we know that you will be a very good tourist, but it will be the last time for you to use this passport. Renew it, OK? This passenger got off lightly. Jack's not the toughest officer in the department. You're welcome. I'm not the one who's strict. I'm not the one who's strict. That title goes to Inspector Mwai. In the current climate, she's watching out for any suspicious behaviour. Yana from Seattle has been hanging around the airport for nearly 24 hours. So Mwais asked Captain Bert to investigate. Do you have a ticket for your next flight? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. You want to see? Yes. Yeah. Sure. It's from the other airport. It yeah, it's Dunmen Airport. Oh, it's just electronic ticket? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Jana tells Bert she's waiting for a connecting flight to the island of Koh Phangan. But she didn't realise she had to transfer to Bangkok's other airport, Don Meng. Bert reports back to Inspector Mwai. When they put me in jail, I don't know. I hope not. Cross my fingers, knock on wood. But Mwai wants to find out more. Gives me like that. I have to know why you stay inside for a long time. Oh, I told them I have a flight tomorrow morning yeah. at 7 a.m. And I thought it was from here. I didn't know there was more than one airport here. Yes. But it's from the other airport. And where will you stay inside? Just on seats, on my computer, and sleeping. Mm. Yeah. The cat like this is uh, look like a, a suspect passenger that wait for the time to to entry after fry, right? It's, it's, it's no good for, for the passenger. Officers believe that some passengers wait for the busiest time to pass through immigration, hoping they'll be processed quickly and smuggled items won't be found. If you have uh, to wait uh, for connecting flight, yeah. your flight must have connecting in yeah. this airport. If have the kit like it, we have to suspect that person. I thought my connecting was in this airport. Yeah. I didn't know there was another one. And then yeah. I found out that there was another one, so I went out. And... I was supposed to take the shuttle from mm -hmm. here, but I just found out. So she, she can't feel about the fight, it's OK. Misunderstanding cleared up, Bert points Yana in the direction of the shuttle bus. My boss asked her to next time check the flight already and check the airport. For Yana, it's a lesson learnt. Don't hang out at Bangkok Airport in the middle of a national emergency when Inspector Mwai is on duty. I didn't think anything bad could happen, but you never know, So, especially in a foreign country. Just about anything can happen. <laughs> Next up through immigration is 24-year-old mum of two, Marika. Hello. Marika. Nice to meet you. It'd have to be something important to make her brave the troubles in Bangkok. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about this rioting yeah. thing. What's going on yeah. here? I've just arrived in Bangkok to get some plastic surgery done. Breast augmentation and a tummy tuck, all at the same time. Can I see your passport, please? My whole life I was really overweight and then I had two kids and I lost heaps of weight. So, body's not what it should be for a 24-year-old, so getting it fixed up. Two and a half million people come to Thailand each year for surgery. Marika meets her fellow medical tourists. So your doctor, what's his name? Dr. Tiddy. Dr. Tiddy, yeah. <laughs> what's and your doctor? And his first name's Porn Thep. <laughs> so I don't know if he does porn stars or not, you know. But... In fact, Dr. Titty's one of the pioneers of Thailand's plastic surgery boom. I think people come to Thailand for cosmetic surgery because we, we've done a, quite a standard job and with a cheaper price. Dr. Titi doesn't stop at tummy tucks and breast enhancements. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. The other group is transgender patients. We're very famous on that. They come from all over the world for, for, for the transgender, for the sex chain surgeries. Nothing so drastic for Marika, but it could still be a life changing experience. It's time tomorrow, I'll have a new body. World Thai Boxing Championships, it's the moment of truth for Beth. Lose this one and she's on the plane home. I feel more nervous than I do, do for my fight, to be honest. I, I don't know how she'll do. Will's right to be nervous. Thai boxing takes no prisoners and the fighter from before is still coming around. Beth's opponent in the red corner is one of the tournament favourites. Just go for it, just go for it. Straight in. Come on, Beth, this is your time. Come on. Almost from the off, Will's fears are confirmed. He should have waited for the monks to bless the Buddha. Beth's taking a beating. Beth 
battles bravely, but Will knows the game's up. She's a bit upset. That's understandable. Mm. I'll try and make her feel better later. You did really good. Don't mind, I got a few elbows in. She's got a few big lumps on her head, so I'm all right, as long as she's got some marks. I've got my lump. Still smiling, she's not got my heart down. At the end of the day, you've come over, you've fought for England, you're in Thailand, one of the most amazing countries in the world. And it's an honour to be here with your, you know, your second family, England team. Beth's putting on a brave face, but the pressure's now on Will to win gold for her, England and his gran. It's a new day at Bangkok Airport. The night's passed off relatively peacefully and the airport's keen to show its business as usual. After the success of Captain Jack's dance routine, they're laying on even more entertainment for anxious passengers. And up in the food court, a real-life Thai celebrity has dropped in. People, when they see me, they are hungry. And that hungry must be very yummy as well. Thailand's top food critic, Kun Reet, is filming her top-rating food show right here, right now at the airport. I'm the food restaurant endorser and uh, having the program every day, Monday to Friday, on Channel 3. I must say that Channel 3 now is a top rating in Thailand. Kun Reed's come to check out an Italian restaurant up on fourth floor departures. Gian Filippo's excited. Kun Reed is a very important superstar in Thailand. She come in our shop for, for film our Italian food in the airport of Bangkok. Not only does Kun Reed have her own show on Channel 3, she's got her own version of the thumbs up. My sign, Aroy Lert, that means OK Channel 3. Whether their food is OK or not. When people meeting me, they will do like this. And when she's wrapped, Kun Reet is happy to spend time with her adoring fans. My fan club. I have a lot of fan club in Los Angeles. They know me very well when they see me at the airport. There may be bloodshed on the streets of Bangkok, but it's more sprained ankles and diarrhea at the airport's medical centre. Whatever the ailment, sick passengers need a fit-to-fly certificate from Dr Art and the team. When you travel by air, there is a risk any time if you have a, your, your medical problems. You have to make sure that everything is OK before flying. Yeah. That's especially true when you're nearly nine months pregnant, like Wan Bui. She's on her way back home to Finland via India. And I have a flight to Mumbai this evening. And then I'll be five days in Goa, and then I fly back, because then I'll have reached 36 weeks of pregnancy, and you can't fly anymore after that. <laughs> I'm going to hopefully give birth in Finland. That's the plan, if all goes well. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm Dr. Shani from oh, nice, to meet you. nice to meet you. Yeah. This is your first baby? My first baby, yeah. yes. And uh, do you have any contraction right now? Mm -hmm. uh, the baby moves well? Baby moves well. Dr. Art's worried about Wambui taking a long haul flight just a few weeks before she's due to give birth. After 36 weeks, you can go in labor anytime, so you shouldn't fly during that period. Does he mm. kick a lot? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> The main risk of flying whenever you're pregnant is that you can go into labor because, you know, nobody can help you during the flight. The air crew cannot help. They, they have to call the emergency landing for you uh, because they, they are afraid about the, the safety of the baby and the mother. But on the plus side, the first leg of Wambui's journey to India is only three hours. I think the baby moved the head down already, okay. but not engaged yet. For the three hours, it's OK. Good. Uh, you can fly. That's it? Yeah, that's can it. Can I have a document saying yeah, <laughs> that I, will, I can fly, I, I, please? I will write it out for you. Wait Thank for you. the letter later on. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> OK. Cool. <laughs>
One boo is OK to leave Bangkok, but she'll need a second certificate from doctors in Mumbai if she's going to make it back to Finland to give birth. The fit to fly certificate is valid only one day because uh, I gave her for the day that she's going to Mumbai. But uh, when she stay in Goa for a week, when she need uh, to go back home, she need another one from India. This is fit to fly? Fit to fly, okay. yes. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Success. <laughs> so Wambu is free to continue her journey, if only for now. In downtown Bangkok, mum of two Marikas getting ready for her afternoon in the operating theatre. She's having a boob job and a tummy tuck all in one go. Yeah, I'm getting more excited now. I'm not nervous or anything yet. I guess that'll be when I'm like being built in. It'll take some serious recuperation and a whole new wardrobe. This is sort of like after the really heavy duty stuff, like to wear for about six months. This is like the girdle belt thingy. Ugh, doesn't even fit yet. <laughs> and then this one's for like the bra. Super glamorous. Marika's in the capable hands of top plastic surgeon Dr. Titty. He's already made his mark. It's like Titi, but everyone calls him Dr. Titty. I saw him this morning at eight. So these are my markings now. It's like he's a carpenter or something and he's like measures everything. This is just only about three to four hour surgery. For cosmetic surgery, for plastic surgery, it's just an ordinary procedure for us. He's going to cut there and then cut down there and take that away <laughs> and then just stitch it back up. And then um, with the belly button, because it's still attached, they'll cut a new hole and then kind of stick the old belly button through it and stitch that back up. Before they wheel her into surgery, Dr Titty talks through the op. We uh, uplift your nipples a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That for breath. And for tummy, uh, we do the full tummy tuck when you without uh, liposuction. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Tomorrow she might be feeling some soreness, but after the day after tomorrow, she should be fine. She can even go for shopping for two or three times a day. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Shopping's for another day. It's the surgery Marika's here for, and she's been planning it for years. I'm normal size now, but in my head I'm still a fat kid. So I think once I've got this surgery done, I can actually move on, be normal. <laughs> Open arrivals are backpackers Tally and Tiri, just back from their full moon party in Koh Phangan. They spent three days on the island, but it didn't go exactly as planned. Not the best couple of days. We've been sunburned. She lost her card and left it in a cash machine. But their real trouble started when the party began. Well, we were being really careful. Like, we, I was we were fine. We had, like, two beers and, like, a vodka and coke checking. They were sealed beforehand. And next thing I know, I'm waking up six hours later. And he said I just collapsed. Crying. Um, she wasn't tripping or anything, she was just panicking. Tally reckons she knows what happened. The only explanation is that I got spiked somehow. So many people offered to help me lift her away from all the like craziness or were buying us bottles of water to give to her, offering me money, offering us to take their hostel room for the night. But, it's just um, gutting that I missed her. We obviously just caught one bad person. Yeah. Whether it's safe for us to go to Koh Sam Road today because of the protests. The friends will spend two nights in Bangkok before heading north. No problem. No problem. No problem. No. Okay, thank you. They're understandably keen to avoid any further trouble. This is completely convincing, did she? We were like, um, we've heard about protests, is it okay? She said, in taxi, yeah. So. We just have to take a risk. Let's hope there's no protests in this <laughs> Civil unrest, spiked drinks, Tally and Terry won't let anything spoil their holiday. It just goes to show that you can't be too careful, so 
we're just going to carry on as we were and hope for the best. <laughs> so the great adventure continues. Back in Bangkok, Marika's ready to unveil her new look. She's had the classic Dr. Titi tummy tuck. Oh, do you want to see it? Well, I think they've done a really good job. Like, I've looked at so many before and afters, and I'm really happy. It's like my old belly button, but in a new position. When I move, sometimes, like, that or whatever, you can feel it sort of wobble <laughs> inside. But it's not, it's not too crazy. He cut off, like, over a kilo of skin and stuff, and they left that at the end of the bed for like 24 hours. And the nurse was like, what do you want me to do with this? And I was like, oh, can you get rid of it? Then there's the boob job, just to balance things out. It doesn't feel that different. Like, I don't look down and think, oh, they're huge or anything, but I'm sure they look different to other people. They're like half a kilo each. So what I got cut off, I got put in here. <laughs> G, G. Right. G. Later at the airport, Marika's sister Erica turns up to admire the work and take the new look Marika home. Oh, <gasps> Dairy Queen! <laughs> and what better way to celebrate extensive weight loss surgery than by sampling the delights of the airport food court? What did you get? Caramel almond or Kit Kat? Caramel almond. Yeah, I got that for you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Back up north in Ayatoya, it's the closing night of the World Thai Boxing Championships, and Will's one fight away from keeping the promise he made to his family of bringing home gold. I'm going to bring it home this time, Mum. Yeah, tell Grandma. I promised that I'd win dinner. I'm going to kick ass, Mum. Don't worry. If he's to live up to that promise, Will needs to tie box a Thai Thai boxer, the reigning champion and crowd favourite. <laughs> He's lost, he's got six minutes to show what he's got for this gold medal. Oh, he wants a hell of a lot. So it's his time to take the gold now. He's whipped his way up and it's his chance now to get what he wants. Within seconds of the bell, Will's opponent goes on the attack. Inside the first round, Will hits the canvas. It's a technical knockout. This year, Will's gran is going to have to settle for silver. Happens, don't it? You win and you lose, so it's quite a tech experience, and you're still second in the world, and you're the one that's gone through three rounds, three fights for that. So you With the tournament over for another year, they can now start their holiday in the traditional British way. I want to get pissed. Right. That's a good idea. Back in Bangkok, the protests are subsiding. Including the two officers, 28 people lost their lives in the unrest. But through it all, the airport stayed open and life slowly returning to normal. The tourist police are out playing on their segways. <laughs> With the immigration hall bursting at the seams, Captain Sarik is busy welcoming people from all nations. I am a Russian. Russian and Thai. And Captain A is busy sending them to the back of the queue. Excuse me. Just get back in the line. Back to the line. I do love this job. Back in the line. Down in the medical center, tourists are dropping like flies. Oh, sorry. And Dr. Art couldn't be happier. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I love about, yeah, working here, being among people, yeah. Up in visa on arrival, Captain Jack's back stamping for Thailand. Everybody is here. Every country, every nation comes here, visit us. So you have a good trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. I love my country very much. Yes. For the passengers too, there's a happy ending. 
Wambui made it back to Finland and gave birth to a baby boy. Unbelievable joy there, come on. Tori eventually found his friend Joan and they went for a drink. So it's time to say goodbye to Bangkok Airport, to all the characters who make it such an unusual place. Bye bye! See you, bye bye! But you've got to say it in Thai. <laughs> <laughs> it means see you again. No pocket man. Goodbye. See you again. And be back on three tomorrow night at eight for even more real life drama as tough young teachers continues their fresh out of uni and in at the deep end in some of the UK's hardest classrooms and some year ten girls aren't making life easy.